So it's the year of the Linux desktop, right? Well, I'm not 100% certain. I think if you want to make that jump from Windows to Linux, I'm going to give you some overviews, some info, and hopefully help you make that decision as someone who's recently made that exact transition myself, specifically for a gaming PC. But yeah, let's get into it in this video. Before then, just do me a quick solid, hit subscribe and hit the like button if you love content like this. I'm trying my best to do more Linux and gaming related stuff. So yeah, hit the like button, hit subscribe and join the crew. So you're somebody out there who's looking to make that jump from Windows to a brand new operating system and Linux is striking your imagination. Well, I'm here hopefully to give you a little bit of a clarifying view of what to expect, the pitfalls, the benefits, all that kind of stuff. And let's get into some of the pitfalls straight away because I must admit there are some things that have confused me, that have frustrated me and of course benefited me in the long run. I think with Linux, you have to make that decision on your own and also you need to make that decision based upon all of the evidence you have available to you. Let me quickly start with some differences between what runs on Linux and how you experience it on Windows. So in the last few months, I've made this jump to Bazite, which I think is built upon Fedora. And it is a very, very clean, similar experience that you'll have on Windows 10, Windows 11. I think Windows 10 is where this is most like it, if that makes sense. There are a lot of similarities in visuals but there are some differences in how you're gonna get things working. I think on Windows, we're very used to using Windows Device Manager, which is how you access the hardware, maybe make changes to drivers if you have to troubleshoot. When I'm using the Linux machine behind me, I find that troubleshooting is a very, very different experience. And you are gonna to have to relearn some of those things that you've potentially done for the last 20, 25 years. It's an experience that has been very, very fun. I haven't touched wood, had many major issues so far, the only one I've had really has been related to networking, which is kind of one of those known problems. I've had to buy, or I already would have bought a Bluetooth adapter to connect all my Bluetooth devices. I use the onboard Wi-Fi, so that's the Intel AX200 chip, which is built into this device. The, the hardware is, it works out of the box, but I do have some dropouts here and there, which conflict with Bluetooth. So you may need to go out there and buy a Wi-Fi, a new Wi-Fi dongle, I will leave links, hopefully, if there are some support things, especially for those of you who want to make this jump to Bazai. There are some network cards that work and a lot of network cards that don't because drivers are just not available. There are some drivers baked into specific builds of Bazai, which will work, and I'll leave links to specific hardware as well where possible. So networking is one of those things I've had little problems with, but I must admit, I did have some problems with my Windows machine with Bluetooth. So it's almost like I've given up the Bluetooth issues or Wi-Fi issues. So I can kind of deal with that because as I say, if a worst case, worst comes to the worst, I can always make my machine fully wired via Ethernet. Let's address some of the complaints that I think people rightly have about games on Linux and games that you won't be able to play. So if it relies on anti-cheat, think Call of Duty, think uh, Apex, think uh, even the new Skate, which is really, really frustrating because I really want to play that. I'll have to play that on PS5. There are lots of games you will not be able to play because of the way that anti-cheat works at a kernel level. So sadly, there are lots of competitive games you just won't be able to play. I'm pretty sure CSGO works fine. So yeah, if you play CSGO, you're not gonna have a problem that runs on a calculator now anyway. I've played Overwatch 2, that seems to be fine. Apex, I've been playing through GeForce now. Yes, the experience is nowhere near as good. It's not as nice, but it does work. I have a workaround. You are gonna have to look at this and think, do I need workarounds or do I genuinely need to dual boot windows to play specific games? What about software? Well, I'm not someone who's gonna use lots of software on this device, but I, hopefully, as of this video, I'm gonna edit the entire thing in DaVinci Resolve on the Linux machine behind me. This is a gaming PC primarily, so yes. If it fails, I'll leave an insert into this right now. No, we're good, we're good. And hopefully previous me or future me has edited this video on Linux and it's all been fine and dandy. If it hasn't, that is something you have to bear in mind. There are pieces of software that are just not gonna be available to you. As I know, Adobe packages are just complete no-go, which is why I have to use a Mac and some other uh, company-based software that I need that runs on Mac OS and Windows. I don't want to have my gaming PC on the same machine that I do work on, so that's why I've separated these. And when I'm not, as soon as 5 p.m. rolls around, my Mac goes off, and the Steam Deck comes out and the Linux machine is running. So yes, in that regard, apart from Android, I'm running Linux, period. There's nothing else in my home that runs Mac OS apart from my work machines, and I do need a laptop to travel to events and things like that. So yes, Mac OS sadly is not gonna go away. I can't make the switch to Linux in that regard because of my employers, but yeah, that is what it is. If you are someone who uses specific software, 
please go and make sure that it runs. If you're someone who uses primarily web browsers, it should be absolutely fine because, hey, all of the big web browsers, Chrome, I think uh, Firefox and a few others, Brave, they all run on Linux. So yes, go and use those. You'll have a great time. You'll have great experiences with that. And I don't think it's a big issue, but if you have specific software, um, yeah, make sure that it works before you make the jump. While I'm talking about things that work and don't work, let me talk a bit about game performance. So game performance is one of those things where certain games will run a lot better. Certain games might not run quite as well. And it's whether or not you're willing to give up potentially some frames in games or certain performance levels, graphics settings to run a slimmer OS in your machine. For me, for the most part, everything has been pretty much the same. Some games actually run better here than they did on my Windows machine. Don't know why that is. It just seems to be the case. I assume it's the way that Windows wires some of your system resources, whereas Linux doesn't do that to the same extent. So in that regard, it's a lot better. You might get more from your hardware. And I think if you have old hardware that is maybe coming to the end of its support life cycle or that kind of thing, Linux might be an option because you can run lots of low end games at really, really good, like, really good graphical settings and not have problems. So in that regard, I think for longevity, Linux might be an option for you. As for certain games I've been playing, you do sometimes need to tinker with Proton and that might be a frustration. Changing Proton settings and moving to certain things and tinkering is not necessarily something people want to do. You just want to plug and play. I, I don't think Windows is perfect for that in any stretch of the imagination, but it is a little bit better from what I can tell in the three or so months I've been using a Bazite powered machine. So yes, if you're happy to tinker, it's great. And I'm the kind of person I don't mind doing that anyway. I'm 90% of the way there anyway by doing this, so it's not a big deal. But if you aren't bothered by that, you just want things to work out the box, set it, set it and forget it. Yeah, maybe look at sticking to Windows and not making this jump. For anyone out there who kind of wants a little bit more, maybe is happy to, like I say, forego a few frames in games, then uh, Linux might be definitely an option for you as a specifically a gamer. Another thing to note is if you have a NVIDIA GPU, you definitely need to work out ahead of time if it is going to work well with your machine. I know NVIDIA GPUs are starting to get more support with Linux. And in regard to Bazite, that you can have builds out of the box that support specific GPUs. I just think you are going to have much, much more fun using an LAMD build, which I have been for a few years now. So definitely go and make sure you are happy to potentially lose out on things like ray tracing. I don't think ray tracing is all that personally. I'm, I'm only talking from my own perspective. So I'm happy to forego that just because it doesn't make that much difference to my life. And there's not many games that I would run that anyway, at frame rates that I would be acceptable. Um, that would potentially increase my gaming experience all that drastically. But if you are someone who really loves ray tracing, maybe go and look at sticking to Windows for your gaming experiences. Another thing to note is the lack of variety potentially of launchers. So you ha are going to have to use workarounds. And that's something that I think is a, it's a positive and a negative in lots of ways, because if you run Steam, it's a disappointing in a lot of respects that Steam has so much control over the gaming PC market but it is what it is. Steam is the premier platform for gaming on PC. And I don't think that's gonna change for a long time. And I don't think that's probably ever gonna change at this point in time. So with regards to other launchers, Epic Games, uh, I think EA's Origin and maybe Uplay, you can use workarounds like Heroic Launcher, which can get access to those games and it will use, uh, there'll be compatibility layers so that games will play as they would natively. I've been running something similar on my Steam Deck called Junk Store. I think you can run Heroic on there as well. I've been using Heroic on the PC behind me. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. And I think with regards to Epic, where you get free games every week, this might be a really good way to bolster your library. But as always, there are some titles that potentially won't work because they'll have anti-cheat and all that kind of thing running behind it. So there's no Fortnite here as far as I'm aware. You can get around that with things like GeForce Now, which seems to run fine. As I say, with games like Apex Legends, you can play Fortnite there. I think there's a few other titles you can play. Not sure if Battlefield works, but yes, Go and decide where you're playing most of your games. If it's Steam, most of the library will work. There are a few titles here and there that don't, but for the most part, if you're happy with Steam, great. If you're not happy with Steam, you wanna use something else, uh, GOG, all that kind of stuff, definitely go and check that out to make sure that things will work as they need to before you go and make that jump. One of the most freeing things I think so far with my experience in the last three or so months with Bazite and Linux specifically is just the freedom I have to control my machine how I want it to be, i.e. there's no AI shoehorn in there, there's no applications added in, there's no simp oversimplification of certain things as well, like having booking.com installed or like hot links to websites that I don't want and don't need. 
That is a huge thing to me. I think having full access potentially to all of the system and all the resources and the hardware available is great. I think sometimes Microsoft will wire certain aspects of your hardware, i.e. RAM, and that means performance suffers as a result. There are some areas as well with, with regards to the experience you have installing things, uninstalling things, you learn how to do it correctly, if that makes sense. Is it correctly? Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Having a fresh machine that is lightweight and is feels faster. This machine feels faster now. I don't have to worry about, be, like I say, being bogged down by what Microsoft tells me to do with my operating system. I think that is the most freeing thing with Linux so far. Everything else has been a benefit. I just didn't want certain aspects of my core experience gaming and um, to be detrimentally affected by a corporation that is doing things that I don't want them to do. And I think that signifies that you look at their recent Xbox Live Pass Ultimate, whatever they want to call it nowadays, price is going up. I don't have to worry about that. Sure, Valve have a little bit, have me by the balls a little bit with my with regards to my Steam library, but they're one of the few companies that I actually trust to do the right thing. And while I am heavily entrenched within Steam, I know that there's other games, game services that I can use out there as well. And it seemingly works pretty darn well here. So if you are someone who is gaming focused, and I appreciate that it's gaming focused in this video, you will have a great time making this switch to Linux if you just want to game, as I say, with certain caveats. There are caveats here, and that is something I hope changes over the next, say, 10 to 20 years. And I know it feels like everyone's been saying that for 20 so years. Linux is in a, is in a really good position. I think when people are looking to Windows 10 or follow up to Windows 10 and don't want to go back into Microsoft's ecosystem, I think that Windows could see a huge tumble in user base. Maybe not enough to move the needle too far, but just moving it a little bit is always a good sign. And yeah, I'm happy to be here on Linux and I'm sure a lot of you out there are going to be the same as well. So yeah, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Hopefully this video has helped you out a little bit with regards to making that switch or looking at that switch. Don't dive in like I have cold turkey, just dive straight into the deep end. Definitely go in bit by bit and make that decision. As I say, it makes a lot of sense to some people. It's going to make no sense to others. But yeah, cheers for watching and I'll speak to you later.